Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, February 22nd. Elon Musk and Governor Gavin Newsom have announced a new California engineering headquarters for Tesla. California has been critical to Tesla's success over the last 20 years. The state has helped Tesla in times of need, and its strong climate initiatives and EV incentives have made it the biggest U.S. market for electric vehicles, and also the biggest market for Tesla. But unfortunately, among other complaints, California's response to the coronavirus led Elon Musk to criticize the state leadership and even move Tesla's headquarters to Texas. Tesla maintained their old headquarters in Palo Alto, California, which became a hub for some engineering and administrative teams. There have been rumors that Tesla has been taking over some of the buildings that have been previously occupied by Hewlett-Packard. But now it's official. Elon Musk stood next to Governor Gavin Newsom in a somewhat awkward position considering he's been very critical of the party of which he represents, meaning the Democratic Party that Governor Gavin Newsom is a part of. A couple of Tesla Model S and X vehicles have been spotted with the new hardware 4.0 suite of cameras. The kilowatts page on Twitter went to the Fremont factory to scout out the changes. For the front fender cameras, it appears that Tesla has changed the angle quite a bit, and it seems to face towards the side more than towards the back. As for the B-pillar camera, it looks like Tesla just updated the camera itself, but the placement and angle, they look the same. The front-facing camera enclosure has actually changed quite a bit. As we previously reported, it's supposed to only have two cameras rather than three, but it's not clear from the pictures that were provided if that is the case. As for the rear camera next to the plate, it just moved a tiny bit. Interestingly, they did not find any cameras in the headlights or bumpers, which is expected to be part of the new hardware. Slightly updated badging also appears on some of the vehicles. A new Tesla Cybertruck prototype was spotted with a functioning air suspension. Similar to the most recent video, this one appears to be filmed driving around inside a warehouse with active construction underway. Also, the video seems to have been filmed with a Hello Kitty gumball machine camera because somehow in 2023 they were able to attain 144 pixels. At any rate, the prototype appears to be set for a very high air suspension setting. Tesla wrote about it in the past saying, quote, raise and lower suspension four inches in either direction for easy access to Cybertruck or the vault while self-leveling capabilities adapt to any occasion and assist with every job. Now, with the flurry of prototypes being spotted, we are anxiously awaiting the initial start of production, though volume scale will be sometime next year. This week's episode is sponsored by SAE International, hosts of the WCX World Congress Experience event. For 2023, WCX is set to return to Detroit from April 18th to 20th at Huntington Place. As the largest technical mobility event in North America, WCX brings together thousands of engineers, suppliers, and mobility professionals to exchange ideas, discuss today's challenges, and build powerful relationships to move your career and the industry forward. Join the global mobility community in the Motor City this April to stay up to date on the latest technological advances, participate in roundtable discussions, and network with the brightest minds in the industry. Gain a competitive advantage and meet the people shaping the future of mobility. Visit wcx.sae.org to register now. After releasing an unexpectedly strong earnings report on Wednesday, Stellantis says it's ready to do the same thing in North America, starting with the Ram and Jeep branding. Despite Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares claiming that electric vehicles were being imposed on the auto industry back in September of 21, he has now announced that the company is ready to, quote, lead the same transformative journey in North America. And they're going to start with Ram and Jeep. Ram has already revealed its first electric truck, the Ram 1500 REV pickup, but they also have a commercial electric van poised to be unveiled in coming months. Jeep, the other Stellantis brand in the midst of an electric transformation, will have the Recon and Wagoneer S models, which will be open for reservations in North America this year. Now regarding the USA rollout, Tavares says, quote, we now have the technology, the products, the raw materials, and full battery ecosystem. At Electric, we are anxiously awaiting more models in the U.S. from Stellantis. Hyundai celebrated their first electric vehicle to be assembled in the United States. Hyundai shared its plans to begin manufacturing its Genesis GV70 SUV at their Montgomery, Alabama facility 
alongside internal combustion engine predecessors as the shift for EV manufacturing begins. Looking to the future, Hyundai announced plans to build a $5.5 billion EV plant in Bryan County, Georgia. They were initially going to begin construction in 2023. However, after the Inflation Reduction Act was passed, they already broke ground this last October, and they're expecting to do production starts in 2025. The GV70 is poised to make a splash in the EV market, competing against luxury EVs in the U.S., such as the BMW iX, the Audi e-tron, and possibly the Rivian R1S, though the Rivian is likely much more capable off-road. I haven't tried either of these cars, so I really shouldn't presume too much. Bentley Motors is bidding farewell to its 12-cylinder W12 engine after nearly two decades as the iconic brand charges towards an electric future. Bentley plans to reinvent itself after 100 years in business as the industry progresses into the new age. The luxury brand is actually part of Volkswagen, and they announced in the fall of 2020 their intentions to become all-electric within 10 years. Today, we hear that the company will retire the W12 gas engine. Starting next year, Bentley's entire lineup will have hybrid options. The news is significant as Bentley is the largest producer of 12-cylinder gas-powered engines, and now the company plans to have no internal combustion engines within this decade. Following an investment of 3 billion euros, Spanish automaker SEAT, or SEAT, intends to lead development and become a small electric vehicle production hub for a number of brands under the Volkswagen Group. To this point, SEAT itself only sells one electric vehicle, the Cupra Born, but it's built by Volkswagen alongside the ID3, of which it is a twin. Things will change as the site's main factory is expected to begin production of fully electric vehicles for multiple brands by 2025. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Jax Bronson says, This guy sounds like Warren Miller. I don't know, Jax. Perhaps there are similarities, but I don't hear it too much. I listen to a little bit of Warren Miller in his old age and then in his younger years for some context, and kind of has a little bit of a country twang in the way that he pronounces his U's. It's quite distinct. The way that he says turn, like as if his mouth is being closed just a little bit. Turn the skis. But let me ask you this, Jax, and for all of you listening in, actually, what accent do you hear from me when listening to Quick Charge? I was actually born and raised for 22 years in the suburbs of a well-known U.S. city, and it wasn't Salt Lake where I currently reside. My parents were neither orators or performers, and I never studied in speech or theater, unless you count easy high school elective classes, which I'm not. I'm curious to hear what you guys think, so let me know in the comment section on YouTube. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.